Hello everyone and welcome to DSM TV Live, coming to you from our head office in Heerle. Now today was annual results day uh, and I'm very pleased to be talking to our CEO and our CFO to better understand what's behind the results. Welcome both of you. Uh, Faik, if I could start with you please. We had a, quite a present surprise this lunchtime. Uh, we were, all of us, were, were offered some delicious cake. What was all that about? And what do you think? <laughs> It was about the good results 2016 uh, and um, maybe I'm a little bit guilty myself, not always attention to celebrating and I think we can do that more in DSM. 2016, it was a very strong year for DSM, well ahead of our strategic goals. We have been growing the business in materials, in nutrition, uh, we have been increasing our profit, we have been increasing our financial returns on our capital employed, the net profit up, cash generation, so many things were good. Uh, also in the area of sustainability, again number one Dow Jones Sustainability Index, we were being rewarded by Fortune as one of the 50 companies in the world changing the world and improving it, so we said we need to celebrate that because none of us, not Geraldine, not me, not the executive committee, did this alone or did the major part or whatever. We can only achieve all those things by the contribution of all of us. What about the external world? How have the media and the markets reacted to our results today? Okay, well the reaction on the day is always subject to expectation. Mm -hmm. So what we saw is that they very welcomed the good end of the year. So we closed 16 with no bad surprises, which is not a, a, a small thing to be able to say. Uh, on the other hand, there was also a lot of expectation out there. Uh, we've had a good year, they've known that from the beginning, and therefore the share price had already reflected the expectation of very solid results. So we saw the share price uh, move sort of up and down around the 60 euros per share. However, I would like to point out that if we see where we started the year, we started the year at 45 euros per share and we're closing now, we're very close to 60. Um, so the fact that we've had this very meaningful improvement in our financial performance is being appreciated by the market, very much so. Um, so now it's a matter of continuing and making sure that we can um, uh, build on this going forward. But the reaction on the day was that they were expecting good results, they got good results. Okay, and you speak with shareholders, the two of you, and also the teams here speak with shareholders, investors, and other people throughout the year, not just on the day. Yeah. When you talk to them, are there any things that they're saying to you, uh, guys, we'd like you to do things differently, or are they happy with the way that we're approaching things? They are very happy with the way we're approaching things. The strategy that we put together was very much talking to a company that's looking on to how to grow organic growth, how to improve our operational efficiency, how to update the culture a bit to get a lot more agile, a lot more efficient, and this has landed extremely well with the investors. Thank you very much indeed for, for that explanation. It's important for us that they are happy. <laughs> it's very important. It's important for all of us, all our employees. Yeah. Well, it's important that, um, I'm pleased that you mentioned that, that there's more people that are happy yeah. uh, and understand what we're doing than just our shareholders or investors or whatever. Mm -hmm. And in that respect, I'd like to invite some special guests to join us now on the, on the red couch as well. Uh, Yi Li. Nina Romano and Harold van Lieshouts, welcome. Please uh, come and take a seat, guys. Good, Good to see you. Hello. Now, you uh, responded to our, our uh, request to send in some questions, and you didn't just send us a question. You also said, hey, I'd really like to come along and ask my questions in person, which we very much Good. appreciate. Mm -hmm. uh, Harold, uh, I think I'll start with you. I understand you work in finance. Mm -hmm. Please, go ahead. Well, thank you, uh, Steve, for, uh, for having us here and inviting us. Um, my question to you is, um, uh, what is your message to all employees uh, supporting demand reduction? My message on demand reduction is that now that we have adjusted the structures to a great degree, we still have some changes uh, to do in 2017, we need the whole company to come along with us, and I mean us, the functions, and help us find what is the right balance between what we really need and what was nice to have. Mm -hmm. We can help by restricting and being maybe a little less uh, user-friendly at times, uh, but we really need the whole organization to help us make those choices because we still need quality of service. Uh, so it's finding the right touch points. Um, so it's uh, probably the topic for 2017 for all of us in the company. Okay. Thank you. Now Nina, your question I think is more about our external orientation. Hmm. 
Yes. According to you, what does it mean to be a customer-centric uh, organization? And also, what can we all do to enable the shift towards being a customer-centric organization? I'm glad you asked the question. Um, we need to put the customers, indeed, central in the company, customer centricity. And I would almost say we need to be collectively almost obsessed uh, about our customers, about what they want, about the demand, about the complaints, about whether they're happy, whether they're not happy, etc. I would even say also we should listen to the shareholders and whether they're happy or not happy with, we just discussed that. But I would say even more important than the opinion of the shareholders is the opinion of the customers because they determine our, our future. And what I love to see, and I think we made a lot of progress already in the last couple of years, is that we put this customer central, that we go out there. And for many people it's difficult. They say, but I need to do so many internal meetings and I need to do so many forms and I need to fill in this and, and I have so much time left, not so much time left for the customers. I think you should turn it around. You should take care of your customers and what the so-called left you spent on uh, the administrative part. I'm not here creating all kinds of problems not to do the administrative <laughs> part anymore of the company, but I think it is important that the customers do not come last, but they come first in, in, in our approach. And that mentality needs to be there. Good thing is our net promoter score, how much our customers wow. recommend other customers to buy from us, went up last year, last two years, and it indicates that at least we are improving a little bit uh, to put this customer central. i glad with your question. I think it's essential for a company. Mm -hmm. If you were to summarize it, we should be in love with our clients rather than with our products. And there is obviously a lot of science in our company, a lot of passion for what we innovate. But at the end of the day, if it's not relevant to our clients, it will not go out there and serve a purpose. Now, one of the things that you mentioned there, which I think touches also on that emotion, is passion. You said the passion for innovation, the passion for the other things that we talk about and that we live here. And I think that touches also on your question as well. Though. Yeah. So I'm working in the Innovation Center, the best group of uh, advanced surface. Uh, mm -hmm. As you know that we aiming at providing innovative solutions and materials for the photovoltaic industry, which has become more and more attractive because solar energy is considered as one of the uh, most sustainable solutions for solving the world energy issue. Um, DSM is showing big commitment there, and we have made the great achievements. So my question is, what else DSM could do to even further accelerate and support the uh, innovation and the growth in such business groups who is f uh, working in the, in the sustainable business areas? Well, firstly, my question to customer centricity, are we passionate about our clients in the solar place? Do we know them well? Mm -hmm. Do we understand the trends of that sector? Are we as knowledgeable as we think we are or uh, that we need to be to really innovate what they need and not innovate what we think we can innovate. Let's realize mm. we changed DSM yeah. quite a bit over the last decade. We were a bulk chemical company. We spent more or less 2% of our turnover into R&D. Mm -hmm. We are now around 5%. We shif shifted from a bulk chemical company to a science-based company. And in our company today, innovation is key. That, that is the new DSM we have created. So what we cannot do is reduce our spend in R&D. What we cannot do is reduce our focus in innovation. Because then we are reducing or not doing what we became as, as a company. So the focus on R&D, the focus on technology development, the focus on innovation is very important. Mm -hmm. And you added some other angle. If we can focus that on not only creating good business, but in the meantime, also solving the big problems of the world, yeah. malnutrition, unhealthy diets, uh, sustainability, addressing climate change, new energies like solar. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a great combination. Addressing the world's problems with innovative solutions, yes. being a science-based company. I mm. would say that's the way to go for DSM in the future. Thank you. And maybe just let me add one little piece. We talked about investors, and people think investors only care about the share price. Well, actually, when we're on roadshows and we're talking to our investors, what they love to hear is yeah. about our innovation areas. Now, we've come up with a strategic plan deliberately three years to get focus on 
making sure our operations are as effective as possible. That is fine, they appreciate it, it it's all good, but those who really like DSM are asking us questions well beyond 2018. They're saying, this is great, keep yeah. on doing, yeah. keep focus, but what are you doing extra? And that is all innovation related. I think this is a discussion that we could, uh, we could carry on all day because I see the, the passion is uh, shining in your eyes for sustainability and for sustainable innovation as well. But there were one or two other questions that we got uh, uh, and quite a few people from different regions asked us about uh, recent political developments around the world. Uh, and particularly uh, they asked us about um, the developments in the US uh, with the new Trump administration and there's questions. Look, is this going to affect DSM? Is it something that you guys are thinking about? Is it something that we as employees should be concerned about? Maybe Faika? Well, of course, we did not miss that there is a new administration in the US. We did not miss that there are political changes in the world, um, that there are elections in several countries. But we are not a political party. Um, and we are not here to express our political view on any single topic in the world. We are a company and need to run our business. And per definition, we need to learn, we need to work with different elected governments in different countries. It is what it is. Not companies elect governments, people, voters in the countries elect governments, and it should be like that. So we need to work with different governments, and in the last 110 years we succeeded in that, and I suppose in the coming period we can again work with different governments in the world. Do we sometimes and I'm not specific here, but do we sometimes raise our eyebrows with hearing some statements of political leaders or parties or whatever? Yes, of course. Um, and do we have our own opinion on things? Yes. And sometimes we express that as a company, and especially there where it is related to our deeper values. Mm -hmm. We care about men and women. We want to give women the same chance in our company as men. We care about different nationalities, different people, different backgrounds, religions, wherever they come from. They need to be able to work for the company and for innovation. It's key that we have that diversity. We care about the planet, about climate change, addressing that, about malnutrition. Those are our key values. And I would say, whatever government, our key values remain our key values and we stand for that. And out of that concept, we will try to do our best to work with every elected government in the world. And sometimes have our thoughts, sure. And sometimes say, let's uh, listen also to other parties and see what we can learn, but always keep our values. That's clear. Thank you very much indeed. Now, before we wrap up, um, I'd just like to ask, what's going to be our main focus for 2017? Main focus for 2017, I would summarize in two things. Keep up the momentum, stay focused. Now, if we manage to do that again in 2017, complete the transformation while keeping our eye squarely on the business and keep the momentum there, I can't see that 2017 wouldn't be another successful year. So, maintain our focus, continue momentum. Absolutely. They're the key things for 2017. If I was to bring it to, you know, something that everyone can hang on to on a daily basis. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Faika, would you like to say a few final words? Sure, and can I address it to the camera, to By your viewers? By uh, all means. All our people in the company, we were enormously proud. Well, yeah, I said it before in the beginning, and Geraldine mentioned it, um, and Steve mentioned it in his introduction, and you see it also by people here at the couch. We can be extremely proud on our company, and I hope you are as biased and as subjective as I am. What we have achieved in 2016 is we have shown to the outside world, to the shareholders, to ourselves, that the portfolio we have created over the recent years is really a great portfolio and can deliver good profits and good results and good growth. That is why we changed the company, but we needed to show also that it's possible. This year we put the evidence at the table, you put the evidence at the table that that is possible. Be proud on that. On top of that, we really changed the world. Be proud on that. And then I can only say, adding to Geraldine, indeed, keep that <laughs> momentum, continue <laughs> that momentum, and let's give a blown away again in 2017. Because we have a brilliant company doing so many good things for the world. And let's continue that track. 
And I said before, DSM originally stands for Dutch State Mines, but we're not so Dutch. We have no state involved in our company and the mines are closed. But it is today doing something meaningful. And I will say with that, keep it and keep the momentum in our company, like Geraldine was saying. Doing something meaningful, that sounds like uh, a perfect place to finish. Thank you very much to both of you, Fiker and Geraldine. Thanks in particular to you as well for uh, coming in and asking your questions. Thanks to all of you who sent in questions as well. We couldn't, uh, we couldn't tackle all of them, I'm afraid, but uh, we'll get back to them uh, the next time. Uh, thanks to everyone for watching, and have a very good year. Thank you.